Okay, here we have a question where there's a lot of information, but there's a very good narrowing statement for us, and so we don't have to do a huge amount of calculations, even though when we're talking about essentially a capital budgeting project, there might be a lot. So here's our question. Kunkel Products is analyzing whether or not to invest in equipment to manufacture a new product. The equipment will cost a million dollars, is expected to last 10 years, and will be depreciated on a straight-line basis for both financial reporting and tax purposes. Kunkel's effective tax rate is 40% and its hurdle rate is 14%. Other information concerning the project is as follows. The sales per year is 10,000 units. The selling price is $100 per unit and the variable cost is $70 per unit. Okay, that's all just kind of standard information. Now here's our question. A 10% reduction in variable costs would result in the net present value increasing by approximately how much? Now, there's two ways we could do this. One is we could take this whole, all this information and calculate the net present value with the original information that they gave us. And then we can say, okay, a 10% reduction in variable cost means that instead of $70 per unit, the variable cost becomes $63 per unit. And then we go and we calculate the net present value of this entire project over all these years with 10,000 units being sold, $100 selling price per unit, and $63 variable cost per unit. And then compare those two answers. Or the other thing we can do is recognize that the only thing that's changing in this is this $7 variable cost. Okay, they're at saying if the variable costs are reduced by 10%, which is $7, what would the impact on net present value be? The net present value is going to go up, but by how much? And so all we need to do is calculate what's the net present value of $7 over this time period. Now, the $7 we know is, is very straightforward. We just did all of that math, all of that process for, you know, the 10% of the $70 per unit. There are 10,000 units per year and we've reduced the variable cost by $7 per unit, which means our profit would increase by $70,000 per year. Okay, our cash inflows would increase by $70,000 per year. However, however, if our inflows, if our profits go up, the government's gonna want their share of those taxes. And so what we need to do is we need to subtract out 40% for taxes, that's $28,000. And so what we're left with is an after-tax cash inflow increase of $42,000 per year. So we'll just go ahead and write that here. $42,000 per year increased inflows. Now, what we need to do is we just need to calculate what the present value of that is. Now, I'm going to put something up here just to demonstrate a good point for us. If we take that 42,000 and we multiply it by the 10 years, we get 420,000, which fortunately, if we look at our choices over here, it's not a choice. And so even if we wanted to forget about net present value and just calculate the cash value that's going to increase, we wouldn't be able to get a correct answer. So what we need to do is we need to go to the table and it will be given to you if you need to do it. We need to get the present value of an annuity factor for 10 years at 14%. Okay, that's the information that they gave us. It's supposed to last 10 years. And the, the uh, hurdle rate is 14%. And so when we get that, that factor is 5.216. We multiply the 42,000 by that 5.216. And what we get is $219,072. Now, $72 is not a choice, but the phrase was approximately $219,072 is obviously very, very close to $219,000, and that is going to be the correct answer. We could have tried to figure out how to calculate the net present value of the project under the first set of circumstances, and under the second set of circumstances, that clearly would have taken a lot longer then just looking at what's that change and what is the impact of that $7 per unit reduction in variable cost. We also need to make certain 
that we remember to take into account taxes. Okay, taxes is something that also we need to make certain that we do. Now, if we had not taken out taxes and we'd done 70,000 times 5.216, we probably would have gotten one of those other choices. It would be C or D um, or something close to that. So make certain we take out taxes because when our cash flows go up, the government is going to take its share of that as taxes. Not a difficult question as long as we understand what it is that's important and make certain that we do the shorter version of the question rather than the much longer version of the question.